My favorite place in the city is Seaport Village. Yes, the kitschy tourist trap, Seaport Village. Specifically, south of Seaport, past the sculpture, past the gazebo, to where the southern tip of the northern Embarcadero just begins to curve and lend. There will be at least one homeless man with a cart containing his every possession, a young couple reading side by side on a blanket, and a small child flying a kite with his dad on the grass. But climb down the rocks that line the small peninsula. Find that large flat one closer to where the water of the harbor laps against stone so that the horizon of the land behind you obscures these people. So that the bay, the bridge, the opposite shore of Coronado and the sun hanging low in the sky, changing the placid water gold are the only things that can be seen. This is where it's quiet. This is where the only things that can be heard are the gentle motion in and out of the Pacific, seagulls echoing from further off, a metronomic clang of an anchor chain against a docked ship, and occasionally a passing speedboat, the drivers of which will always smile and wave. This is where I can breathe. After holding my breath for months, finally able to exhale a little of the anxiety the rest of San Diego is cluttered with for me. I know it's not very San Diegan to like a tourist spot. Believe me, I hate tourists as much as all of you. <laughs> but in a city that, despite being so sprawled out, is so overflowing with air, noise, light, street, and emotional pollution, Seaport is my seaside Eden. My escape from the chaotic shit show the rest of San Diego seems to be. When I was little, we moved around a lot. I spent almost my entire life in different parts of San Diego County. Escondido, La Mesa, El Cajon, Lemon Grove, University Heights. And there were times when I really liked it here. I used to get so excited when I was little, driving past the Sharp Hospital on the 805, my mom pointing at the rooftop stork telling me, that's where you were born. <laughs> my family spans three generations of San Diego localness. My great grandfather owned a bakery just down the street from here. My grandmother went to Hoover High, my grandfather San Diego High, and every once in a while, I run into someone I've never met before who recognizes me as my mother's daughter. Wow. When I was a kid, all this lineage made me feel like this was my city, my home. But as I grew older and my mind became more cluttered with things that made me hate my life here, I became convinced that the only way to escape these anxious memories would be to pack up and find a town-sized version of my little seaport haven to call home instead. I had a shitty childhood. My parents were drug addicts and alcoholics. We lived below the poverty line in hunger, squalor, and neglect. For a long time, this is what San Diego was for me. It was constant relocation. It was seeing my mom crumpled in a corner as my dad beat her. It was looking for enough scattered change to buy my younger sister's food. It was also escaping into books and make-believe, hunting for bugs and bushes pretending they were forests, or scratching up my bare limbs, scrambling down into canyons pretending I was miles away from everything related to mankind, or hiding in closets, waiting for the back to fade away, revealing Narnia. When I was a kid, I actually believed that if I spent enough time in this closet, Mr. Tumnus would turn up with his little flute and invite me over for tea. <laughs> As an adult, my make-believe shifted. What would bring me peace and stability was finding someone who I could spend forever with. I really just moved from one fairy tale to the next. I spent four years 
in a shitty relationship with someone who cheated on me, was manipulative and emotionally abusive because I was desperate to make something in my life last. But even that eventually dissolved and the page turned again. Then I met Chris. Chris had his shit together. <laughs> he was smart, grounded, and stable. <laughs> he came from a good family, was getting his PhD, and showered me with romantic consideration. As we sat on his sunny La Jolla patio, surrounded with Brugmansia, discussing current housing trends and good places to raise children, I was sure I was, going, I was finally going to have, for the first time, some peace and security in my life. Finally, my make-believe was coming true. I didn't hesitate to pack my possessions, most of which were just books, when he said, it wouldn't make sense for us to live together. After years of constant moving, living in poverty and squalor, living out of the duffel bag I used to cart clothes between my mom and boyfriend's houses, I was finally going to have a home of my own. I felt settled. Waking up every day in the same quiet apartment with the man I really believed I would spend the rest of my life with and began to plan that life around. We made it five months. Two days before Valentine's Day, he decided that there was a high probability, he was a math major, that there was someone out there more compatible for him than I was. While I was an amazing person, he was sure there was someone better. And the only home I had ever known disintegrated beneath me. It took a long time to recover from that. A lot of drinking, a lot of meaningless sex, and a lot of hours spent near water, trying desperately to shut everything out but the sound of ripples licking at rocks. The steady chime of a buoy, the hum of a boat whose operator would smile and wave at me, the sun dancing on the harbor like a million fireflies, the airy smell of salt, as if I only let go of gravity, it would carry me across the Pacific far away from a town so addled with anxiety and rupture into some Eden. But as upsetting as that experience was, I learned that even in moments of absolute certainty and feeling so stable, the ground can and will fall out from under me. I learned not to depend on people or places for peace. They're just too heavy when you start to fall. I struggled with writing this. Every revision was a new story, a new attempt at figuring out just what this complex relationship I have with San Diego is. After my fifth total rewrite also fell short, also failed to answer any questions, I cried for a few minutes, that's what writers do, <laughs> and decided I absolutely could not do another thing until I had a cigarette. At 11.30 p.m., I drove to the nearest liquor store, bought a pack, came home, and lit up. Before going back inside, I ambled around a little, wondering with no success what the hell I was going to write next, and plopped down, defeated on a curb, in the parking lot outside my apartment in UCSD's graduate student housing. And I noticed this. Not the cosmos. Oh, it's very dark. <laughs> in, 18, in 1985, Steve and Sandy were graduate students here who loved each other enough to carve their names into concrete. And I realized Steve and Sandy are long gone, maybe not even together anymore. But that moment that they had is still here almost 30 years later. People change, they leave, cities morph. Life is constantly fluctuating. And even when this curb is gone, somewhere, someone will still have this memory. And even when they are gone, 
somewhere, someone else will have a similar memory. And that is what matters. Not having a static geography, not having idyllic lasting relationships, but having these moments that come back to us and make us smile. As cliche as it sounds, and it takes a while to figure this out, it really is about holding on to the good things and making peace with the bad. Because these are the things that shape us. These are the things that make us who we are. And the only peace we'll ever have is in being happy with who we are. And trying to make myself better than my shitty childhood, I went to college. And now I'm in graduate school doing something I love. Something that makes me happy and helps to shape my concept of who I am. I study theory, write poetry, and teach freshmen essentially how to think. And these things make me happy. These things I know no matter where I am, I will be doing for the rest of my life. Learning, creating, teaching, and that's what stability is. That's what home is. Not a place, but me. It's April, and my phone tells me it's 65 degrees in La Jolla. Blue skies, scattered clouds, plenty of sunshine. Typical. <laughs> I'm on the shuttle to UCSD, where La Jolla Village Drive meets Torrey Pines to spend a quiet afternoon in the poetry archive. Out the open window, among the chatter of graduate students discussing the pressures of upcoming dissertations, I can see the ocean peeking through million-dollar houses and the namesake pine trees. I can taste salt. Wind blows my hair around my hipster sunglasses. Even on a bus, on a busy street full of smog, with the lingering residue of Indian food still scenting the tacky upholstery, I can smell and feel the ocean. If I really concentrate, I can almost maybe hear it too. It's these tiny fleeting moments where I catch a familiar whiff and the air feels just right that remind me I'm okay here. No matter how much I say I hate it, how much uncomfortable history I have with it, how much I want to leave and start over, no matter if I ever actually do, I will always have moments like these that bring me more peace than any stable home or relationship ever will. And that is what San Diego is for me. Not a place, but a moment. Hannah to water. <laughs>